Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel. Today what I'm going to be doing is recovering the pure gold off of 10 Intel Pentium Pro CPUs. I'm going to be using some muriatic acid, which is hydrochloric acid. They are one in the same. I'm going to be using some sodium chlorate here. And then to precipitate the pure gold, I'm going to use copperus, which is ferrous sulfate. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, try to extract as much of the base metals out of these chips as I possibly can with just some uh, hot, hot, hot dilute hydrochloric acid. These things are magnetic, so there's iron in them or nickel, one of the two. And so what we're going to what we're going to do is start out by putting some dilute hot hydrochloric acid on these chips and extracting as much of the base metals as we can and then go from there. And we're gonna start that right now. I'm gonna begin this process by wiping the uh, white thermal paste that's on these chips. It comes right off. I just wipe it right off with a piece of paper towel. Don't have to be real thorough here because we'll be burning these in a second. I just wanna get the, the bulk of it off that I can by wiping it with some paper towel. These aren't too bad. I've seen them in the past caked up on there pretty good, the white thermal paste that they use to uh, make sure that they get a good heat transfer so for this next step what I'm gonna have to do uh, for those of you who are emotionally attached to these chips I apologize but this is a necessary step in the process so if you can't stand watching this please look away but I've got to break all these chips into pieces in order to be able to get at the little gold components that are uh, sealed up inside of each one. Got them all broken up into pieces now. What I'm going to do is sweep them up into a, into a fan here and then get them into a melt dish here so I can lightly incinerate them. What I mean by that is I'm going to put a flame on them until they just stop smoking. I don't want to heat these red hot because if I do I want to run the risk of alloying some of that metal with the base metals that are located inside of the chip. So I want to do a light incineration. What I'm going to do next is lightly incinerate these pieces. What I mean by that is I'm going to hit them with the flame until they quit smoking and that's it. Put them in. I got some tap water in here. And I just pick each piece up, hit it with the flame until it just stops smoking. Burn off the uh, grease and oils that might be on there. Put it in the beaker. I started out with 600 ml of tap water in this beaker and so what I'm going to do now is add about 600 ml or so of concentrated uh, muriatic acid 31.45 percent hydrochloric acid. I'm going to pour it right on in. I'm going to give it a quick swirl here to get it all mixed up real good, set it on the heat. 
put it on about uh, medium heat and just let that cook for a while. Hydrochloric acid immediately begins to dissolve some of the metals in the uh, in the chips, and that's what I want to see. The time right now is 15 minutes until 9 p.m. I'll give reports of uh, the time as this uh, process goes on. The CPUs have been on the hot hydrochloric acid now for about 30 minutes. Just want to get a quick temperature reading on the uh, solution in here. It looks like we got it at 175.5 degrees inside the beaker. The solution's been on the boil now for about an hour and 15 minutes. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add some more uh, hydrochloric acid here. I'm at about 1100. I'm going to take it up to 1500. been about 15 minutes since I added that uh, last dose of hydrochloric acid. I'm just going to get a quick reading on our uh, solution here. It's at 177 degrees. And now what I'm going to do, I've got some drugstore hydrogen peroxide here. I'm going to measure out about 200 ml. I'm going to add this to the the beaker here, see what happens. That's 200 ml of 3% uh, hydrogen peroxide. Alright, I'm an hour and a half into the process here. So far, I've put 600 ml of tap water, 900 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid, and I just added 200 ml of 3% grocery store hydrogen peroxide solution. And what I'm hoping that will do is help loosen the base metals underneath the gold and release the gold from the CPU so that I can recover it. I paid $185 for those 10 CPUs on eBay, and that's been about a year and a half ago. I've had those things sitting on my shelf for about a year and a half. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and uh, show that uh, what you can expect to get out of each one of those is about 0.3 grams. That's what I usually get when I try to do this. I'm not an expert at this. I'm kind of making this up as I go. And so just bear with me. We're going to find out uh, what this experiment yields as far as gold is concerned from these 10 CPUs. The solution has been on the heat now for almost 12 hours. It's 8.30 a.m. the following day. I'm going to reach in here and get a little of the solution on a piece of uh, filter paper here and do a stance chloride check. Make sure we're not putting nothing in solution, no gold. And that test is absolutely positively negative. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, add, uh, it's down below 1500. I'm going to get it back up to 1500 with some more concentrated uh, hydrochloric acid here. And I'm looking at the, uh, the chips down in there, and what I'm seeing is it appears that uh, some of the posts have uh, come off. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're real flimsy. And so uh, the acid appears to be eaten away at the base metal of the posts of the chips anyway. 
then uh, we'll just leave it in there for a little while longer. See if we can get more of them base metals removed before we go to try to put this uh, gold in solution with some sodium chlorate. solution has been on the heat now at a uh, low low boil for about 18 hours uh, I've uh, reduced the volume of liquid in there by about 100 ml so I'm gonna add another 100 ml of hydrochloric acid to top the solution off you can see the little uh, prongs are coming loose from the chips now that's what we want to start to see here. Let this sit on the uh, fire, or let it sit on the heat. I can see a few gold foils floating around in there as well. Let this sit on the heat and uh, dissolve a little bit longer. There you can clearly see some, uh, some of the gold foils floating to the top of the solution. And uh, so we're having some success at removing the base metals out of these uh, out of the components from these chips. I just added some hydrochloric acid to the uh, beaker here, but I'm going to go ahead and get a quick reading and show you that the uh, temperature of the solution is about 175.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The solution has been on the heat now for about 21 hours. And I'm going to get a temperature reading here. Got 175 degrees or so. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add another 100 ml of 3% hydrogen peroxide from the uh, drugstore, grocery store. Add it real slow here. Give it a quick stir here. The solution is a very dark olive green color looking. And I can see many uh, of the small gold foils forming. Most of them are down at the bottom of the beaker. The solution's been on the heat now for 24 hours. I'm gonna reach in here with a piece of filter paper, get a little bit of the solution on here. I'm going to put some stance chloride emission just to make sure we're not putting anything in solution, any kind of gold in solution here. And as you can see by that, the test is negative. We've got no gold going into solution. And if you look down here, you'll see that we have a lot of foils, gold foils down in there. Most of the little pegs on the bottom of the chips have been uh, removed. Pretty much got a lot of the base metals to go in the solution here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, let it cool down, and then we'll filter it and then go from there. Before I turn it off, I want to go ahead and get a quick temperature reading for those that are interested in uh, what that's gonna be. And we've got the temperature inside the beaker there at 181 degrees Fahrenheit. Pull the beaker off the heat. Let it cool down so we can filter it. The solution has been allowed to cool now for about a half an hour. That's at 106.5 degrees. What we'll do now is I've got a kitchen strainer here on a four liter beaker. I'm going to pour the contents of this beaker through the strainer trying to get the gold foils to collect in 
the bottom of this beaker right here. I want everything going through the strainer and collecting in the bottom of this beaker. Here's the gold foils that I've captured in this uh, strainer here. I'm going to rinse it with some water and try to get some of those uh, foils rinsed off and down into the beaker down here so I can filter them out of this solution. Then what I'll do is I'll put these large pieces back in the big beaker up here and continue with hot, uh, hot hydrochloric acid treatments. Now I'm going to rinse the contents in this strainer off with some water. This is distilled water, but you could use uh, tap water, no problem. Uh, we're working with a chloride here, so it's not essential that we use distilled water. Now I'm going to pour the contents of the strainer back in this beaker here. And continue uh, trying to extract the uh, base metals out of this. Got everything out of the strainer now, rinsed down into this beaker. Just want to pull this one piece out and have a look at this. The uh, gold is starting to peel off of the chip there with this uh, treatment that I'm giving it with hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. So I'm just going to continue to do that and see if we can get all this stuff stripped off of all these uh, pieces of the chips down inside this beaker. Alright, now I'm going to put some hydrochloric acid back on these uh, pieces of uh, the CPUs inside this uh, beaker. And we're going to continue with uh, heating them up with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, see if we can get everything off of there. Put it up to the one liter mark. I'll put this back on the heat now. Continue trying to dissolve off those base metals. Turn it back up to about medium heat here. I'm going to add another 100 ml of hydrogen peroxide here. the uh, contents out of this beaker over here. I'm going to use a fluted filter paper which is we just fold it like a paper airplane a few times back and forth and what it does is it increases the surface area of the filter so that the liquid runs through faster. Finally got all the liquid out of the beaker now, and as you can see here, I've got some uh, gold foils down there in the uh, residue. So I'm going to go ahead and get these into the filter now, and we'll save this for later processing. got the 
residue all filtered out of the solution now. We're gonna save the solution and the residue. We've got the uh, remaining uh, pieces of CPU and uh, hot hydrochloric acid bit of uh, about 100 ml of uh, hydrogen peroxide. We're just going to go ahead and let this uh, cook for a little while and uh, continue on with the experiment. It's been about an hour since I put this second uh, treatment of hydrochloric acid on. We got the temperature up to 181 degrees. I got to look down in here and I noticed that the uh, like the uh, foils are flaking off the uh, the CPUs now pretty good. That's what I wanted to see. So this is going to work out pretty good, I think. It's going to let this cook for a little while longer and uh, continue on with the experiment. have been on for 48 hours now and I think I'm at the point where I need to uh, go ahead and start dissolving the gold if that's what I'm going to do with these. Go ahead and take this off the heat and let it cool down now. this cools off I want to get a temperature read and show you what the temperature of the solution is inside the beaker there 169.5 the solution has been allowed to cool it's down to 79 degrees go ahead and uh, reach in there and get a little bit on a piece of filter paper here do a status test make sure we're not putting anything in solution and that Stannis test is negative. No gold in solution. Now I'm going to pour the uh, solution off out of the uh, beaker back here through the same filter paper and try to collect all the residue so we can uh, refine it. liquid poured out of here now and as you can see down inside the beaker here we got some foils in there uh, I don't know what all else is in there but I can see gold foils so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some hydro fresh hydrochloric acid on this and uh, see if I can get some of that stuff to go into solution with some sodium chlorate First, I'm going to give this a quick rinse with some fresh hydrochloric acid. Just a little bit. Pour that through the filter as well. I'm going to give it a second rinse with some hydrochloric acid here. Probably about a couple hundred ml. Pour that right on into the filter. I've rinsed the chips and the foils in here with some hydrochloric acid. I got it funneling through a uh, filter paper here. And once we get that uh, completely drained out of that filter, I'll take the residue and add it into here. And then we'll go ahead and put some fresh hydrochloric acid, some sodium chlorate, see if we can get this to go into solution and recover the gold. These are the gold foils that I uh, filtered out of the, uh, the chips there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this now. And I'm going to uh, Pull it out of the uh, funnel 
add it to the uh, residue that's in the beaker here. bubbler here that I use to bubble air through my stock pot and my waste treatment uh, bucket and what we do is we got a little piece of tubing here this fits right inside there like that on the other end I got a little piece of glass tubing stuck through it and that holds it down to the bottom of the container there so I can bubble some air through it now I'm gonna add uh, some hydrochloric acid to the beaker here about 1.5 liters or so I'm going to add some sodium chlorate a spoonful at a time and just let this thing bubble see what happens Looks like I've definitely got some chlorine gas being uh, produced inside there from the reaction between the sodium chlorate and the hydrochloric acid. It's uh, cold. I don't have any heat on it, so we'll just let this go and uh, get a status test here in a little bit. I just added the sodium chlorate. I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off and stick this piece of filter paper down in there. Give me a little bit on the end of that and then put some stannous chloride to see what we got here. Oh, get an immediate reaction. We've definitely got gold going into solution now. Nice. Okay, we're gonna get a temperature reading here. I just added that first uh, spoon of sodium chlorate. The temperature in there is only 73.5 degrees. What I'm going to do now, it is 1.30 p.m. by the way, I just started this at 1.30 p.m. We go ahead and add another spoon of uh, sodium chlorate here and we'll just let this react for a while. So we've been on the uh, we've been on the bubbler here with sodium chlorate, hydrochloric acid for about two and a half hours now. Just wanted to point out here earlier I said I put uh, 1.5 liters of uh, hydrochloric in. And apparently I misjudged greatly because I was only like 900 in the beaker, so I've only got 900 ml of hydrochloric in there, not 1.5 liters as stated earlier in the video. I'm going to add about uh, 200 more ml of hydrochloric acid here. Now I'm going to add another spoon of sodium chlorate. This will be the third one. Put the lid on. give it a quick stir here. Definitely got some chlorine gas evolving off the uh, off the mixture. I'm seeing gold foils in there too. So we got a ways to go before we got everything in solution.
temperature reading 77. Now we'll get a status test. Definitely got some nice gold going in the solution there. As a comparison, I'm going to take a little bit of standard test solution, put on a piece of filter paper here. Uh, this is made by dissolving one-tenth of one gram in a little bit of aqua regia and then adding a liquid to 100 ml. And we'll put a drop of stannis on this. And that's what that looks like. Here's what our test out of the beaker looks like. And what we can do here is get a general idea of about how much uh, gold we can expect in solution. I'm going to add one more spoon of sodium chlorate. And then we'll let this go ahead and bubble for a while and just come back and check on it here in an hour or so. I've had the solution on the uh, bubbler for about five and a half hours now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it uh, and uh, filter it out. I've got a filter flask set up here. Go ahead and pour this right into a filter here. I've got all the solution in the filter now. What I'll do here is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more hydrochloric acid back into the beaker. Let's see if we can uh, do another extraction. It's about 500 ml of uh, hydrochloric acid. There's already plenty of uh, sodium chlorate in there. So I'm just going to add the bubbler and let this sit. The solution's been on the bubbler now for about a half hour. I think I've got just about all I'm going to be able to get out of this. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and pour it into this funnel here and add it to the rest of my solution. Rinse the uh, the chips with a little bit of hydrochloric acid here. And add that rinse to the bottom. And as you can see, all we have is just bare ceramic chips. And that's it. in the chips with small amounts of hydrochloric acid. Until all the color's gone out of there. Using a pipette and some hydrochloric acid to rinse down the insides of the funnel. I've been rinsing the chips with small splashes of hydrochloric acid. Now I'm going to put some stannis on here. You can see there's absolutely no reaction whatsoever. No gold in that solution. Check what we got going on here in the funnel. Same way, just to see if we got all the gold rinsed out. Absolutely no reaction. Zero. So we've got all the gold rinsed out of these chips 
and out of this funnel. As soon as I get all this liquid out of here, I'm going to go ahead and precipitate the gold out of the solution. Now I'm going to make up a uh, saturated solution of uh, copperus to use to precipitate the gold. This is copperus by high yield. It's uh, ferrous sulfate. It's green crystals. I'm just going to start adding spoons full to the mixture. To the I got some tap water in here, about 400 ml. Just going to keep adding it until I get a saturated solution of uh, of copperus. Ferrous sulfate is the chemical name. Copperus is the plant food name. Got a clean four liter beaker here. What I'll do now is uh, take out my funnel and I'll transfer the solution from the flask to the four liter beaker here. been on now for about uh, 10 minutes, it's 120 degrees, I'm going to add this brown color so I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid and try to get it to turn green here, we want a green color, we want to avoid that brown color, that looks about right right there, much better. Now what I'm going to do is take the uh, saturated solution of copperus, carefully pour it into a filter here. This has to be filtered because it does contain uh, little bits of iron that if they're not filtered out, it'll get into the gold and contaminate the gold. So it's important to filter the copperus solution before we add it to the uh, gold solution. see we get an instant cloud of uh, an instant cloud of gold forming down there that's our gold forming in this solution the copperus is precipitating out the pure gold powder and it'll settle to the bottom of the beaker when we're done Give it a quick stir here, and then I'm going to test it with Stannis Chloride solution here, see if we got all the gold to drop. And I believe that there's no indication that we have gold in solution there. Got everything out of solution. All the gold is dropped. What we need to do now is wait for this to settle and then recover the uh, pure gold powder. Should be very high purity gold, about 3.9 is fine probably, close to it. It is 8.30 a.m. the next morning. I've allowed this to settle overnight. I think I knocked off about 9.30 and went in and went to bed. Came out this morning and uh, the gold has settled completely. There's our gold down at the bottom. What we'll do now is siphon this off and recover the gold and get a yield. I've already checked the solution with Stannis. What I have here is a tube full of water. What I'm going to do is I stick my thumb over one end like this, put the open end down into the gold waste solution, and just let my thumb off. 
I'm siphoning the, this directly into a waste bucket here because I know there's nothing else in there except waste. Here's our gold, that brown powder at the bottom is our gold. What I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to uh, siphon off or uh, filter off the rest of the solution there and gather up our gold and then we'll do a melt and get a, uh, get a yield. Now I'm going to get the gold out of the uh, beaker here. By pouring it through a filter paper, filtering off the solution and capturing the gold in the filter. This is the big beaker that the uh, gold was in, as it, and you can see, I think there's some uh, little bits of gold left on the rim here, and there's some down in the bottom. You can never get the, all that out of there, so what I usually do in that case is just add a little hydrochloric acid, and then uh, followed by a few drops of uh, concentrated nitric acid, and then I just put the lid on it on the heat, put the lid on it, and turn the heat on low, and what will happen is uh, that aqua regia in there will uh, form a gas, come up and strip all the gold out of there, and then I'll just add it to my stock pot. Okay, all the liquid has uh, come off that filter, down into my uh, filter flask here. It appears that there is some tiny, tiny traces of gold in this, so this will go in my stock pot. But now what I'm going to do is go ahead and notice how the uh, filter looks white. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this with some hydrochloric acid. And try to get all that uh, copperous rinsed out of there. I'm going to take the uh, filter and put it in a little melt dish here so we can do a melt on this. wanted to point out that there's still a little bit of yellowish color to the uh, filter there so that means we didn't get quite all the iron out of this so the gold's not going to be uh, ultra pure but it should be up over 99 percent I'm going to go ahead and melt it now Here's our little gold bead. Just got done melting it. I can see myself in it. I'm going to put it in some water here. 
And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid to uh, dissolve off the flux that uh, is sticking to it. It's a pretty piece of gold. I'm going to take it over here to the sink now. Got all the flux off of it. We'll just flush this out with some hot water. Here's our pure gold bead from the Pentium Pro CPUs. It's got a real nice finish on it. It's real bright and shiny, like a, a mirror on the outside. Go ahead and put it on the scale now and see what kind of weight we got. Exactly what I thought we were going to get. I get that every time I do these CPUs. 0 0.3 grams per CPU. I had 10 of them, so we got 3 grams here. Okay, we got this, uh, we got this experiment concluded. I was able to extract three grams of pure gold from the 10 Pentium Pro CPUs, which is in line with what I normally get. I've been getting 0.3 grams of pure gold per CPU every time I do this. I've got about, uh, we're right at the 72 hour mark on this experiment. I took 72 hours to complete it. I did get a real nice bead of uh, pure gold here. It's got uh, a real nice finish to it. I can see myself. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is putting this on my eBay uh, store. My eBay username is Baphelous, B-A-F-E-L-O-U-S. And I'm going to try to recoup some of the money that I spent to uh, produce this video. I'm going to probably price it a little higher than it's worth, right around 200 bucks or so. But uh, it'll be up there and available if uh, is anyone's interested in, uh, in picking this up. So... Uh, That'll conclude the video for now. Appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll say so long for now. Thank you.